Hey guys, time for Weekly Weird News. Jean Jacket Hour, Volume 2. Yeah, it's getting kind of drafty in LA. It's down to 70, so we had to layer up. But on to the news. Hey, you want a bigger dick? Mm-hmm. Wait, no, I have a huge one. I don't need a bigger dick. It would, it would kill you if it got any bigger. But one man did want a bigger dick, so he paid someone to inject his own stem cells right into his Johnson. Mm -hmm. And guys, it totally worked. Believe me. Now, we live in a time where changing things about ourselves that we don't like is easier than ever. Exercise and dieting and all-around health are scientifically understood better than they ever have been, offering gains and losses that your granddad could have only dreamed of, as long as you're willing to put it in the work and listen to professionals and pay up. Yeah. For people known as biohackers, though, all that peer-reviewed scientific knowledge is simply a starting point, allowing you to pursue even greater results by essentially treating yourself as a test patient and doing shit to yourself that actual medical professionals would find unethical or illegal. Oh, bye. Buzzwords. <laughs> Industry buzzwords. We're gonna pivot around those ethics. Yeah. Biohacking is not a new thing. Uh, athletes have been doing it for at least the, ha the last century to gain an edge over their opponents in sports uh, through chemical supplements, anabolic steroids, blood doping, and so on. But nowadays, the need for peak performance extends far beyond athletic competition, with some people simply insisting on unlocking their body's true potential, whether it's simply to feel more energetic or look more attractive or last longer in the sack. Often it involves using one's own body to test out theories that have already shown promise in the scientific community but haven't yet been deemed safe for the general public. Uh, like this guy who last month during a Facebook live stream took off his pants and in injected himself with an experimental herpes vaccine. Uh, or this guy who injected CRISPR, C-R-I-S-P-R modified DNA into his arm at a biotech conference last year telling the room, this will modify my muscle genes to give me bigger muscles. And now he can't even find shirts that fit. Oh, man. It's a tough issue. Anyways, yeah, it's kind of incredible that it's taken this long to reach the point where a dude is just injecting stem cells into his dick to make it bigger. I mean, yeah, health, fitness, that's all great. But if you go up to 10 able-bodied random dudes on the street and explain biohacking to them and then ask them which part of their own biology they'd like to hack, approximately 10 out of those 10 men are going to say, well, a bigger dick, duh. I'm just so tired of uh, tying weights around the head of my penis and walking around with weights. Putting rubber bands at the base to yeah, get to more blood in yeah, there? so it fills up with blood, yeah. yeah. It's risky, but... I mean, the results don't lie. I have a big... The ladies Got a big purple dick. <laughs> <laughs> What's, uh, why is it so purple? Uh, you know, it's so big. Yeah, it's just... When it, when it gets that way, it's... Uh, you'll like it. Also, I don't really see color. <laughs> I would have seen Get Out three times. <laughs> Uh, while there's no evidence that injecting stem cells into your dick will make it bigger, there's no evidence that it won't. I mean, if you're injecting something into your dick, it's gotta go somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. And the dick, the, the penis, it's a... It's, it's it's stretchy. It's human skin. It's it's I don't gonna know. yeah. But but just also, inject it with water. The the stem cells could just go right into the balls where the pee is stored. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know. I know. When I have to go to the bathroom and uh and I've been holding it for a while, my balls are gigantic. Yeah. So what a titus. You just hold the tip of your dick and start peeing. Yeah. And it blows your dick up like a water balloon, right? Yeah. That's how it works. It's a cool party trick. Uh, anyways, back to the injecting stem cells thing. <laughs> uh, at the very least, there's been some success at treating erectile dysfunction with it. And when you're Ben Greenfield, uh, th that's more than enough pretext to try it out yourself. Greenfield is one of the many online fitness gurus who have embraced biohacking from basic vanilla shit like ketogenic dieting to shooting electricity into his brain, to also having sound waves fired at his dick to also microdosing psychedelic mushrooms, uh, along with plenty of uh, stem cell therapy. This guy, he does it all. He's a buffet of biotech. He's like basically Captain America. Yeah, give me those fucking sound waves. Mm. Hate to be this guy's dick. He's gonna make his dick sentient he is. and then abuse the shit out of it. That's right. You never stopped to, I, <laughs> I gotta stop quoting Dr. Ian Malcolm in every fucking episode it's, of this show. It's because we're living in a, in a <laughs> weird reality where Everything came true. Yeah. So yeah, injecting some of those stem cells into his dick wasn't all that bold for Ben Greenfield. Sort of his thing. He already injects stem cells all the time, subscribing to the theory that doing so essentially keeps his body young and prevents aging. Uh, for the dick injection, he went down to Florida to a clinic called U.S. Stem Cell, who was in the news last year for accidentally blinding three elderly patients that it was testing a stem cell vision treatment on. Whoops. Leading to an investigation by the FDA. But hey, you gotta break a few eggs to make an omelet, am was I right? Was it Dr. Malachi Love Robinson down there doing all that stuff? 
I don't know if the timelines line up, but uh, it would have been great if it was. Yeah, I'm sure he is paying close attention from prison. Oh, he's looking at all the stem cell books in prison. Oh, baby. Yeah, we're back in the game. Anyway, yeah. So Greenfield, he, he had those people at U.S. Stem Cell inject his own stem cells into his dick, specifically the meat of the tissue, whatever the fuck that means. <laughs> Wasn't the pee hole though. Well, that would hurt. It was the meat. Yeah. No, you have to inject it right into the vast deference. Why exactly he thought doing so would make his dick bigger is unclear. Uh, outside of just the basic first thought you have of putting anything into your dick will make it bigger, I guess. Uh, yeah, there's zero evidence to support this, but Greenfield tells Gizmodo that it totally worked, guys. He described his current penis as noticeably better hung and says that just days after the procedure, it was almost like it grew. Mm. Asked if he's actually measured this change in size, he says, I mean, I haven't taken out a ruler. When inside of my wife, she can tell. This guy fucks. Yeah, he's getting laid, he swears. So yeah. I don't know which one's the lie. If he's getting laid or if he has a giant dick because of this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, guys, it's pretty convincing stuff. Uh, there you have it. But uh, it might not be worth the thousands of dollars it costs or the risk of infection, getting injections from a clinic who already blinded a bunch of old ladies. Uh, I don't know. Stem cells do have a bright future in treating injuries and diseases, but unless your dick is a mangled up mess, maybe don't bother with this one. And, yeah, uh, I, the game, I can't believe his wife. Just like, you home from the clinic yet? Put that... Put that fucking biotech dick inside me right now. There's a, so the, Men's Health went out to this guy's house and like filmed a documentary about him and he is, he's a kind of likable guy. He's like one of those guys who just always gotta be yeah. doing something. Yeah. He, he's got an energy about him. He does, he's like 35 and he looks like he's 25. So maybe the stem cells are There's working. There's something going on but there. Like yeah. they, they Where's he getting the stem cells from? That, that Florida clinic. Oh. He mails them a bunch of his cells and they mail back the stem cells and he just mainlines it. But yeah, they talk to his wife, and she's like normal, not into any of this shit at all. Yeah, he watches. He watched one Tony Robbins documentary, and he was off the deep end. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. Speaking of injuries, the dignity of our neighbors up to the north was severely injured last week at the Pyeongchang Winter Olympics when they went up against Germany at their national sport of hockey and lost. It wasn't a crushing defeat by the numbers, four to three. But in here, yeah, it was a crushing defeat. Uh, hockey's Canada's thing. So yeah, it definitely stung so much so that Germany's foreign office issued a travel advisory via Twitter warning that uh, Germans in Canada should exercise a high degree of empathy. Be nice, don't gloat, give hugs, buy rounds of hot chocolate. Just imagine how you would feel if Canada beat us in soccer. That's what Twitter should be used for. Mm -hmm. uh, Canada's foreign office replied to the tweet not long after with, quote, thanks. Congrats on your first shot at gold. We remember our first gold medal match in ice hockey like it was yesterday, 1920 to be exact. Uh, Canada not really being, kind of kind of like a clap back, not really the nicest thing for Canada to do. Yeah, real cool guys, we've been winning ice hockey for they a long time. They are trying to polish a very bruised ego here. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, Germany ended up losing to Russia anyway for the gold, and uh, also none of this hockey at this Olympics really mattered because players from the NHL weren't allowed to play, so mm -hmm. it, was, it was amateur hour. But speaking of Canadian Olympians, these Olympics almost passed us by completely without an international incident reminiscent of Lion Ryan Lochte's shenanigans down in Brazil. But just a day and a half before the closing ceremony, Canadian skier David Duncan was arrested along with his wife and a trainer for drunk driving in a stolen car. Oh, okay, whoops. Now, Duncan was not the driver, his trainer was, but mm. there's still a lot of unanswered questions about why the three of them decided to hijack some random local's car to drive back to Olympic Village. But one hint as to why they might have done that is that the uh, trainer's blood alcohol level was 0.162, which is over three times the uh, local Korean limit of 0.05. So that probably had something to do with it. Yeah, I'd say so. Why can't they just stay out of trouble, these kids? Also, why is Ryan Lochte just living a great life already? It's not fair. It's not fair, damn it. He got to dance with the stars. <laughs> Back in Canada, though, though, they've got their own problems, like having to keep denying the conspiracy theory about Prime Minister Justin Trudeau being the son of Fidel Castro, which pops up all the time. <laughs> this theory has been around for a while, uh, and on the surface it seems pretty plausible because, I mean, look at them. Yeah. Just look wow. at them. Uncanny. Current day Justin Trudeau, yeah, looks a hell of a lot like young Fidel Castro. And Trudeau's parents, Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau and his wife Margaret, did famously visit Cuba in the 1970s. 
The conspiracy got especially big back in November of 2016 when, when you know, following the death of Fidel Castro, Justin Trudeau said nice things about him. And finally, most recently, following the suicide of Fidel Castro's son, a rumor circulated that he'd left a suicide note admitting that Justin Trudeau is his half-brother. So that last part seems to be pure fiction, mm -hmm. pulled out of nowhere. But the rest of it is uh, especially suspicious when you consider that Justin Trudeau's mom readily admits that she used to fuck all sorts of famous dudes on the side while Pierre was prime minister. It's kind of nuts. Her mm -hmm. life was very strict. She's like the, Nancy Reagan. The 70s were wild. Nancy Reagan, the blowjob queen. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nancy hung up her blowjob jacket when she got <laughs> married, though. My favorite blowjob jacket. Margaret was just getting started. Yeah. And you know those those French? I those guess you French can say Canadians, they, so yeah, she, she likes the yeah. young dick. They passed the, the baton, which is a giant dildo. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's a fun theory. It's got plenty of pins to attach your red yarn to, but it's still probably bullshit, mainly because of timing. Mm -hmm. Yes, the Trudeaus did visit Castro, but not until 1976, when Justin was already five years old. Proponents of this theory often link to articles describing Castro and Trudeau meeting in 1970. But that was actually when they first met on the phone to discuss diplomatic stuff. Well, did Castro ever go to Canada? No. Oh. Only for uh, only for Trudeau's uh, funeral. Did Trudeau's wife ever go to a random hotel in Miami at any point in the 70s? I don't know. See? I don't know. We don't know. See? Justin Trudeau was born on Christmas Day, 1971, making his conception have to have taken place sometime in mid to late April of that year. Uh, that would have been just one month after Pierre Trudeau, who was already prime minister, got married to Margaret, which attracted an insane amount of media scrutiny because she was 26 years younger than him and the marriage was previously unannounced. So what's more likely, Pierre Trudeau knocked up his new wife six weeks after they got married or, or that the new first lady of Canada managed to sneak off to Cuba right after her wedding undetected to fuck Fidel Castro while she was ovulating. I, I, I don't know. All right, great wedding, Pierre. Um, my eggs are right. Yeah. I got to get on a secret flight down to Havana one night only. Yeah. One nut only. Yeah. I mean... I'll be back. It's one of those fun conspiracy theories. <laughs> yes, we are French Canadian, but please. Yeah. Please, you go fuck Fidel. But enough about America's hat and its slippers. <laughs> Let's check out the latest news going down in the land of the free and the home of the... I'm not really sure anymore because when you see images like these, <laughs> you really start to wonder if we're not all living in some giant insane asylum. I mean, don't get us wrong. We completely understand why people like their guns, and the, we understand the vast number of reasons that they have for owning them or collecting them or whatever they want to call it, but when, from, when people from outside the padded walls of the <laughs> U.S. claim that we're all a bunch of gun worshippers, this term, it wasn't meant to be received as a good idea or <laughs> instructions on how to act regarding your precious boomsticks. It was not, it was not a, to, supposed to be like, you know what, that's a great idea, but... It's like those people that became Nazis. I became a Nazi because you called me a Nazi. <laughs> I started literally worshipping guns because you called me a gun worshipper. To own the lips. But yeah, so, uh, yeah, worshipping guns, that's exactly what went down this past week at a church in Newfoundland, Pennsylvania, called World Peace and Unification Sanctuary. No association with Ron Artest. Uh -huh. uh, Worshippers, also known as Moonies, filled the church for a commitment ceremony involving their guns, rifles, or written proof from a dealer that they had put a payment down to purchase one in the immediate future. Presumably, these level-headed and completely normal people are just waiting to pass that pesky background check. So the paperwork with intent to buy, that worked just fine for the blessing. Yeah, it, you were pre-blessing your gun. Mm -hmm. It's like a video game pre-order. Yeah, that's You're true. You're pre-blessing pre, pre the devs. Thank you. The whole commitment ceremony thing was actually, according to the church itself, just an event for heterosexual couples to exchange or renew their wedding vows and, uh, well, you know, also acknowledge that Sun Myung Moon, the father of this church's pastor and a South Korean businessman who died in 2012, is uh, pff, the true Messiah and the second coming of Christ. I knew Jesus was Korean. <laughs> That's what I, I was saying it. all along. Yeah. But, I knew it. This is something that I, I'm pretty sure all of the new parishioners uh, weren't even aware of because they, they probably instead in, chose to focus on this other part of the event uh, that was listed just beneath all that stuff about how the pastor's dad was actually Jesus or something. Anyways, that, pa uh, that passage below all, all that mumbo-jumbo about 
the new Messiah, uh, it read as follows. Blessed couples are requested to bring the accoutrements of the nation of Cheon Ilguk. Crowns representing the sovereignty of kings and queens and a rod of iron designated by the second king as an AR-15 <laughs> semi-automatic rifle or equivalent such as an AK semi-automatic rifle representing both the intent and the ability to defend one's family, community, and nation of Chon Ilguk. If unable to purchase and legally transport such a rod of iron because of laws barring the purchase of such weapons or other reasons, Couples are invited to purchase a $700 gift certificate from a gun store as evidence of their intent to purchase a rod of iron in the future. Those attending the ceremony on February 28th in Newfoundland with this gift certificate will be invited to participate in a color guard ceremony in the presence of the king. What uh, it's what Bible is the rod of iron from? Basically, it was uh, in the Bible. It says somewhere that you protect people with a rod of iron, and that's what people have clearly a gun. He was describing the AR-15. Ipso facto, you could see. Yeah, anyway. it's right there but, in the pages. Read the goddamn Bible, folks. But uh, oh boy. This whole thing continues with, quote, these actions to participate with crowns and a rod of iron slash gift certificate <laughs> are signs of attendance, sovereignty, and vigilance to protect God's coming nation of John Ilguk. They are also a foundation of faith and substance to unite with the second king who is advancing God's providence at this time. To not do so, if one is legally and personally able, would be a sign of great disrespect to the second king of John Ilguk and to the true father himself. Now, I guess we should point out that Chan Il Guk uh, apparently means nation of cosmic peace and unity. Of course. So now that all that stuff makes sense, right? Everything we just read? That clears everything up. Yeah, so <laughs> the, the actual event, it happened this past Wednesday, it drew people from all walks of life and it closed down a local elementary school which decided <laughs> to take its students 15 miles away from the church as a safety precaution. <laughs> the event also demonstrated how absolutely loyal to their guns some Americans are. It should go without saying that this obviously isn't a representation of our country as a whole, nor no. is it a representation of what we would actually consider a responsible gun owner, nor even a representation of American Christianity at all. <laughs> it looks crazy, because it fucking is. They're blessing their assault rifles, praising the second coming of Christ, and wearing crowns made out of ammunition. Which looked great, by the way. Uh, so, as I was writing this, I hit Elliot up uh, on uh, Messenger and was like, this shit's crazy. Like, blah, 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 blah. And Elliot's like, oh, the Moonies. And I'm like, the Moonies? <laughs> what the fuck is a Moonie, Elliot? Yeah. So that's so, the, the believers, yeah, right? the original guy, Moon, uh, South Korean businessman. Uh, around the time, a little bit before, during the Korean Civil War, he uh, decided that he was actually the second coming of Jesus Christ. So yeah. he started a church, obviously, the Unification Church. He also started, started news uh, companies, which uh, he, uh, he spawned the Washington, not to be confused with the Washington Post, the Washington Times. The conservative DC. The, the anti-communism <laughs> yeah, newspaper. Yeah, they own that. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, their big thing was uh, uh, just make all their members of the church, they'd be like, all right, you are gonna marry him, and you are gonna marry her. And then they'd all get married at one big ceremony, and they're like, all right, great, now get to fucking, because we need to spread this church around real quick. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, he died, and uh, all of his kids, weirdly enough, couldn't agree on who was, like, the successor, so yeah. there's, like, several Mooney churches that are What do you mean? All... The, the second coming of Christ didn't tell his sons which one was the blessed child? I guess not. Yeah, anyways. Yeah, it's wild. <laughs> it's wild. I, and do we know, I, there has to have been unsuspecting, just normal, like, That's what I'm evangelical saying. Christians. People that went there, they were like, like oh, cool, this church I, is doing a gun I love Jesus. Church. I, love I love guns. Church. I love guns. This Sounds is perfect. Great. And then they get there, like, excuse me now, what? Uh, Son Il Guk, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean the second coming of Christ? <laughs> you mean he already lived and died in Korea? I'm just here for the gun bless. <laughs> Can we just, I just bless these guns? I look ridiculous. No, I don't want to get married today. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm marrying my weapon. <laughs> it's a, actually it's a tool. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. The, the, the the whole thing. This whole blessing ceremony, it follows a big thank you President Trump dinner. Uh, that, that was an event that the church hosted last weekend, which praised the president for standing his ground on the Second Amendment. But uh, they might not be going back for seconds, Elliot. Because uh, once the Moonies sit down and watch this televised bipartisan meeting, where Donald Trump uh, seemingly embraced various levels of gun control that obviously wouldn't sit well with either the NRA or the Republican Party, might not sit well with the Moonies either. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, so Trump also seemed to have a sudden realization as to where these guns are being purchased because when Senator Dianne Feinstein asked uh, what they should do about weapons of war easily accessible on U.S. streets, he responded claiming that AR-15s were the result of the black market and not where you walk into a store and buy them. <laughs> Which apparently, unbeknownst to him, is exactly what you can do. Yes. My God. Uh, Feinstein replied immediately to his claim with, Oh no, you can go into a store and buy an AR-15. You can buy all these weapons. Yeah. Wait. You know, we all learned something what? today. <laughs> Donald Trump literally thought every AR-15 was a illegally purchased. I don't know if he gun. thought it was everyone, but it seems to me that he assumed that an AR-15 was something you couldn't just go out and buy at a store. No, you can. In some states, you could walk in and walk home with it. Yeah. But back to his comments on gun control as a whole. Uh, the New York Times summed this whole meeting up quite well, saying, quote, the president veered wildly from the NRA playbook in front of giddy Democrats and stone-faced Republicans. He called for comprehensive gun control legislation that would expand background checks to weapons purchased at gun shows and on the internet, keep guns from mentally ill people, secure schools, and restrict gun sales for some young adults. He even suggested a conversation on an assault weapons ban. They continue, at one point Mr. Trump suggested that law enforcement authorities should have the power to seize guns from mentally ill people or others who could present a danger without first going to court. I like taking the guns early, he said, adding, take the guns first, go through due process in second. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> the declarations uh, prompted a frantic series of calls from the NRA lobbyists to their allies on Capitol Hill and a statement from the group calling the, uh, the ideas that Mr. Trump expressed bad policy. <laughs> Close to bad optics. Uh, yeah, uh, Republican lawmakers suggested to reporters that they remained opposed to gun control measures. So yeah, not exactly in line with his party on this one. It's almost like he doesn't have any real beliefs of his own. That's why we love these <laughs> televised meetings where he <laughs> brilliantly goes off script. Uh, anyways, this also created a bit of a not-so-civil war on the r slash the Donald subreddit where commenters bickered back and forth as to whether their lord had committed the one sin that was bad enough to finally shake them from their worship or if this was just more 5D chess being played by a genius. Uh, another subreddit gathered up some of the best exchanges, so we'll leave a link to that below. But, you know, this exchange in particular right here is it's just so perfect that we have to share it now. Uh, one commenter in the Donald Trump subreddit threw their hat in the ring and said this. Sad. If he doesn't retract the statement and show through action that he's pro-Second Amendment, this will be my final stop on the Trump train. This is a non-negotiable issue. To which a bot called Trump Train Bot replied, We just can't stop winning, folks! The Trump train just got 10 billion miles per hour faster! Which, uh, you know, resulted in this hilariously pathetic response from user xmaga1776x. <sighs> no, Train Bot. Not now. Just... What a country! All right, <laughs> let's move on to uh, some weird headlines from this week, starting with Russian stadiums to allow cocaine, cannabis, and heroin at 2018 FIFA World Cup. I've booked Woo! my ticket, <laughs> have, have you? You know, you gotta have the was, heroin to balance you out with the cocaine. I was, you know, I, I, I swore to myself recently, I'm like, I'm not gonna visit Russia anytime soon. Yeah. Just a little too sketchy for me. But I take it all back. I'll see you guys all the 2018 FIFA World Cup. Give that man who is, who is running the marketing campaign for the World Cup a raise. Yeah, no, actually it's just some weird, like, uh, some weird rule about like how if you have a doctor's note for any medi medication, you're allowed to bring it into the stadium. Which, I don't know about can uh, heroin or cocaine, but I think that does mean anyone with a California medical marijuana card can just blaze up all over the place. Yeah. Although, so wait I would California risk. medical cocaine cards and heroin cards. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know too many doctors that are prescribing cocaine and heroin. I mean, if, I, if, you, if you know one of them. You, I, I mean, mean they, they do. Yeah, I mean, opioids are a big issue. <laughs> yeah. Go down to the World Cup and pop on a few fentanyl patches and... <laughs> I got a time release. Not off. I got a time release fentanyl patch. <laughs> Someone quick, give me some cocaine to wake up. Woo! And then some weed to just mellow me out. Just that is a roller coaster up. of fucking options. Yeah. Anyways, it's gonna be a fun time. It's gonna be a great World Cup. There's, <laughs> gonna, there's gonna be so many. So, you know when they do like the sign cards in the crowd where it like makes messages. Yeah. There's gonna be so many holes in that. Yeah. And then a lot of enthusiastic Ooh. people who make it look like an animated GIF. But whatever. Uh, back on the Trump train, Trump raises concerns about impact of violent movies. Maybe they have to put a rating system for that. Should we tell him? I don't think we should. We should let uh, Diane Feinstein tell her. 
Donald, there's a, Donald, there's the MPAA is a, it's a rating system. And it actually is, you know, in the seats of the people that make the choices, it's a lot of evangelical Christians. I, 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 I just don't understand why you would want to. No, you, you know what? You're right, Donald. We should have that. Also, like the best response I saw was, your treasury secretary produced Suicide Squad, it's which true. is true. It's true. Yeah. Trump says he would have run into Florida school without a weapon. <laughs> yeah, this one, uh, he, like, that's one of those ones you see the headline, you're like, there was he didn't say that. And it's like, no, he, first of all, he called the security guards and the local police cowards who dropped the ball. And then he's like, you know, if, I, if that had been me, I would have run right into that school, unarmed. I would have, would have tackled that guy. He doesn't even I hang out with his own son. Him. Yeah. I, well, he hangs out with the slimy ones, Beavis and Butthead, but he doesn't hang out with Baron. Yeah. But you gotta remember, Trump is a virile, lean, 250 pounds. Yeah. 230 pounds. Yeah. Of pure of bravery. Pure muscle. Who definitely didn't dodge the Vietnam draft by saying he had bone spurs. Those bone spurs are now claws. Yeah. That's the thing, is it's like when you when you punch a brick wall long enough, yeah. you get you build up the, the bones in your hands, and then yeah. you're, you're like a fucking, they're, they're weapons, they're real weapons, they're yeah. strong, you can't be, they can't be broken. So his bone spurs now, his feet, they're like, uh, they're like Wolverine feet, like Wah! Yeah. He's got his claws. feet have literal like cowboy spurs, <laughs> bone yeah. coming out of the back. Yeah, of that's how you There's a new people. president in town. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what bone spurs are, right? I, I, yeah. Sure. Over the Philippines, Philippines Duterte defends remarks on shooting women in the vagina. With stem cells? With guns. Oh. Fuck. I don't, it's, he said this a few weeks back, but yeah, there's a, apparently a communist uh, rebellion in parts of the Philippines, as there always is, and uh, apparently a lot of women are in the rebellion. And he just, he's like, what the fuck? Women's place is in the home, having kids. If we ever find these women, we should shoot them in the veg. Mm. That'll teach him. And then people mm. were like, what? what? I think it's a little over overboard. Uh, and he's just like, ah, I mean, I was joking, but the sentiment, I stand you by are, the remarks. That's one of those joke not joke things. Where you gauge interest yeah. by it being a wouldn't joke. Wouldn't it be hilarious if you had <laughs> butt sex? <laughs> I it, mean, <laughs> wouldn't it be totally weird? <laughs> oh, it is? Oh, yeah, I was just yeah, joking. Was just, just joking. <laughs> you know how my sense of humor is. It's wild. <laughs> we should probably shoot women in the vagina. Yeah. What do you guys think? <laughs> Eh? Eh? I, I guarantee you that's how, that's, how, that's how Trump walks around Mar-a-Lago with like new like plans that he has. Yeah. Hey, what do you think about all these what AR-15s the, from the black what market? What if we ban video games? <laughs> what, if, what if I ban video games? Those losers, they'll never come out of the basement. Nah, I just kept, it was a joke! It was a joke. Sarah, tell him that was a joke. <laughs> the president was obviously joking. Hope Hicks, wait, tell him it- Oh, Hope's oh. not here anymore. Hope? Oh, that's yeah, sad. Hmm, alright. Chicago congressional candidate says he'll definitely get high if he wins. <laughs> On marijuana? Yeah. Oh. This guy's actually great. Uh, I thought it was more of a Tom Ford situation. No. We don't. Wait, what's his name? Not Tom. Tom Ford. Fashion designer Tom Ford? No, Rob Ford. Rob right? Ford. The his late brother. Rob his Ford. brother, Rob Ford. <laughs> Heiress to the, uh, the Ford Motor Company. Motor Company. Yeah, this guy, he's, uh, yeah, he's running for congressional district of Chicago. He's a former FBI agent and, like, a uh, U.S. like diplomat, yeah, uh, who just started smoking weed like two years ago. Have you guys seen this weed? <laughs> yeah, he's like, this is fucking great. <laughs> yeah, have you guys read The Secret? And he's, uh, yeah, I, he's, I wanted to be a. Con I, I wrote on my on my vision board that I wanted to be a congressional candidate. Yeah, he got all this pot. Like he, his picture started going around on Twitter though, because he his campaign photo is him, like sitting in a big chair in front of like an American flag backlit, just like. Yeah, smoking a J. No. He looks fucking badass. That's well. That's good. I think that this is, uh, this is. He's already high on my list. The dude is like. He's high in real life. Total high like, on my list. Like yeah. FBI, U.S. diplomat. He looks like fucking Clark Kent. Dude, wait till he fucking watches Planet Earth. <laughs> and wait till he discovers DMT. Yeah. And salvia, and then watches that Woodstock documentary. Wait till he goes to the 2018 World Cup. Tries Did you all. know their seed in the clouds? Oh fuck! I worked for the agency that was like responsible for that. Huh. Man warns others after losing thousands during online monkey purchase. <laughs> of all does, of things, does, <laughs> does he reside in the United States? Yes. Does he reside in Florida? I don't know. Because they, it's pretty, uh, you can kind of own whatever you want there. Well, this Very guy- Very lax on the This guy world. decided he wanted a monkey. At, he, he needed that monkey. Uh, he was watching Friends reruns. So he, instead of, I don't know, like, finding a, a sanctuary or somewhere to like, 
you know, go and physically pick out your monkey. He went online and just Googled like, monkey online for sale, monkey delivery and found- <laughs> Monkey delivery. And uh, found a, a monkey store in Hawaii that was like, all right, yeah, just send us the money in the form of like Amazon gift cards and we'll get that right to you. No red flags there. Yeah. And so he went down to like the CVS, he bought a bunch of Amazon gift cards and even the cashiers were apparently like, I'm buying a guys, monkey. Guys, we've seen this a lot. Uh, it sounds, you might be- Nah, I'm buying, buying a monkey. Scam. He's like, no, it's totally legit, but he didn't get his monkey. Now he's warning other people seeking monkeys online. Don't trust it. And don't you, uh, there was a problem in the 90s with people buying monkeys because of friends and yeah. Guys, thanks Ross. Yeah, it's a responsibility. It, it wasn't were, Ross, it was they, the yeah. other one. Joey? No, Ross owned it. Whatever, I never watched it. And they, uh, they, you, you gotta change their diapers and shit. Yeah, they're, they're disgusting. Like a it's like having a permanent baby. Yeah, imagine having an a, ugly, hairy, permanent baby. Yeah, a baby that could, like, climb the ceiling. Yeah, it could go anywhere. And if it gets loose, like, you're in a lot of trouble. Yeah, if that thing bites someone, yeah, you're fucked. Outbreak, too. Yeah, exactly. We've all seen the movies. Lance Armstrong and Mia Khalifa are kindred spirits. Yeah. Apparently, Lance Armstrong, his, uh, his current career is podcasting. And uh, he's good friends with Mia Khalifa. His podcast is all about uh, making terrible decisions. Mm -hmm. And so he interviews people who uh, regret terrible decisions. Apparently, Mia Khalifa was only in porn for like three months and kind of regrets that now because yeah. she's like, I was 21 and I needed money. Now it's defined me as uh, a porn star. So yeah. They're good friends. They, they cook together. She was yeah. on podcasts. Yeah. She's a fun personality. She's a, she was on Twitch as well. Yeah. You know, I hope she finds a, a second career. Yeah. Drug suspect on toilet strike for 38 days would rather die than take a poo. Uh, Cause yeah, he's, cause he swallowed the, the bag. Yeah. And right now, no drugs on him. So they're waiting for him to like, come on, poop it out. He's been going at this point, it's like 40 something days. Dude, that I'm is just gonna be painful. Holding that butthole, which like, I don't know how that's even possible. Yeah. But yeah, they're like, it's gonna come out like a giant fucking stone. Yeah. Also, it's just your body's trying to get that out because it's toxic. Yeah. You're gonna die and get like septic shock or whatever. I think he's probably waiting for the moment wherein he knows that the bag has dissolved properly because he'll get really <laughs> fucking hot. Yeah. Like me. Oh shit. <laughs> hey, who wants to take a shit now? <laughs> me do. <laughs> oh wait, there was like five grams in there. <laughs> I'm about to die. <laughs> oh fuck. <laughs> uh, yeah. Constipation, not a joke. Not a joke. Yeah, that's a, that's a big problem. Drug, <laughs> probably, he's probably getting fucking surgically removed, honestly. I mean, he, he should do a lot of things. <laughs> this isn't a, a level-headed person. Yeah. Speaking of level-headed people, drunk naked man found inside pipe organ. Was he fucking it? No, he had a couple McDonald's wrappers around. It was This, this was at the- uh, Is this Rick Sanchez? No, this was uh, some Australian man. It was at- the uh, Masonic Lodge of Melbourne, which has the biggest pipe organ in all of Australia, and he somehow crawled inside, ruined it. Apparently, it's beyond repair. <laughs> Took his clothes off, got inside the pipe organs, like pipes, and uh, ate a bunch of cheeseburgers. How did he fucking wreck it? Like that's it's I like don't know. Strong metal, right? I I don't know. No, not strong enough for this. Uh, I'm sure, lad. I'm sure some pipe organ enthusiast out there can give it a whirl. Mm-hmm. Canadian program providing alcohol to heavy drinkers envied by Scotland. <laughs> hey, what can't we? I, I can't do the Scottish accent. I'm not even gonna try. But yeah, it's uh, this, this whole rehab thing that from the last few years where uh, you just give alcoholics like microdosing. Yeah, kind of. Well, yeah, like, well, because if you stop drinking yeah, like alcohol, that, you you go into like you get shock the DTs, and yeah, uh, it's like uh, you you can die from you it. can die yeah, from you, alcohol. You get withdrawal. seizures and stuff. So if you're that far into it, where you like have been drunk for the last ten years, yeah, uh, you kind of need to taper off. So that's that's what they're doing. And uh, I'll give it a shot. What are you doing? <laughs> I want some of the free booze too. <laughs> nice. Yeah. All right. Uh, Canadians get all the free booze. <laughs> No. <laughs> no. Wow. <laughs> and final headline, German Railway nixes plan for Anne Frank train. Did they nix it immediately after it was brought up as an idea? No, they had good intentions. They, the next, the new line of uh, the high speed trains in Germany, they wanted to highlight famous, famous Germans. Of all walks of life. Like Amsterdam. 
Well, she was her family was from Frankfurt. They fled uh-huh. Germany when the Nazis took yeah. power and went to Amsterdam. Yeah. That's where they got caught and took the. So, yeah, it was good in spirit. But yeah, Anne Frank died in a fucking death camp that she was brought to on a train. Yeah, the Anne Frank Museum. They they pointed this out and eventually, uh, yeah, the German railway is just like. Probably not worth the trouble. It's like if uh, like if a local municipality like the uh, Atlanta public transit system was like, it's the Harriet Tubman train. Yeah, the Harriet it's Tubman it's railroad. Su- it's the Harriet Tubman subway. Yeah. There you go. It's the see? underground railroad. You could see, you could see and t- Atlanta does have the underground. Mm-hmm. They, their whole city burned down, they had to build on top of it. So yeah. it makes sense. Hopefully no one nicks is our idea. Yeah. But uh, that's it for this week's <laughs> Weekly Weird News. It was a fucking doozy. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time. Be sure to watch uh, a new episode of Tugs right here, uh, and also our live stream from uh, from Monday. Check that out. Uh, we had Joel on. It was a lot of fun. We drank cat repellent. Not our brightest moment, but no. uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>